Well, hello, Internet, and welcome to part 26 of my Learn to Program series. I decided, because you guys asked for it, to do one more TK Inner tutorial. A whole bunch of people asked me to do a TK Inner tutorial in which I showed how to integrate TK Inner with a database, and so here it is. So in this one video, I will go through the whole entire process step-by-step step on how to create a TK Inner database system, and I have a lot to do, so let's get into it. All right, just like always, all of the code and a cheat sheet for this whole entire video is available in the description underneath the video. And the only thing I have done ahead of time is design the database application the way it's going to look. Now, I on purpose kept this extremely simple. However, we're going to be able to do a whole heck of a lot with this simple thing here, just so you can look at the code and completely understand it. So what we're going to be able to do here is it's going to create a database for us, of course. It's going to create tables for us, and then it's going to allow us to come in here, enter our first name, a last name, click on Submit, put it down inside of a list box. If you click on that, it's going to pull that information from the database, put it back up inside of here. Then you'll be able to go in and edit that information, click on Update, and it'll update it in the database. So as you can see with this very simple little layout here you're going to be able to make pretty much any type of database application you can imagine. So let's jump over and go through the planning stage of exactly how we're going to build the structure of this thing. Alright so here we are starting from step one. Well what I know I am going to need is a couple modules here. So I'm going to import TK Enter of course and let's go and get TTK and actually you guys could pause this video right now and try to create what I just showed you there and that would be a great activity for you and then you could sit back and see how I made it or I'm going to demonstrate exactly what I'm going to do with this guy and then you could come in and pause it after I go through the step-by-step -step sort of use case that I'm going to design here and then try to create it or do whatever you like all right so here it is it's a student database so the very first thing I'm going to think about here is what do I need to do? And I'm going to create all of my functions here. For now, I'm going to leave out my class fields, but let's go and put them in here anyway. So class fields, I know I'm going to have to come back and I'm going to have to create those guys. Now I'm going to create the different functions. Well, I know I'm going to have to have a function that is going to set up my database. All right, so that's going to be pretty self-explanatory. And there that is. And then we can just come in here and do something like set up database. All right, pretty simple. What other functions am I going to need? Well, I'm going to need another function that's going to allow them to submit information. So I'll just call this student submit. Like I said, I'm just writing this out of my head, so don't expect the names to be exactly perfect. So let's come in here and we'll go submit student whatever stud okay and what else am I gonna need well I'm gonna need a way to update my list box see I'm just going through here and just easily explaining all the simplistic ways and all the different things that I'm gonna need and update and just do list box like that I'm also going to need a way to load my student information into whenever they click on the list box it's going to load into the entries so I'm gonna have to create that so load and let's just call this student so there's that and load stud and the next thing and you might want to go and just you know create or print out that little diagram I showed you there or draw it on a piece of sketch pad just so you have it in front of you so that you can see exactly what I'm looking at right now I'm also going to have to come in here and create a way for them to update the student information so just throw that inside of there as well so update stud and what else am I going to need well I'm going to need a way to initialize everything so we'll just come in here and do an init and I know that I'm going to need root so let's go in here and do that since I'm working with TK enter and I don't know what else I'm going to do for this right now so let's just leave that empty and then of course we also know that outside of my class I need to get a TK object so let's go and create that guy right there and st students database I'm gonna need to go and create my student database so let's create that and we're gonna pass it root of course and also we need our main loop alright so now we have a rough overview of every single thing that our application or our student database objects are gonna do set up the database 
allow them to submit students, update the list box, load students, update the student specifically, and then initialize everything. So now let's think about the class fields that we are going to need. And whenever we're thinking about this, what we need to think about are what types of pieces of information are these different functions going to be able to access. So what they're going to need is they're going to need to have you know the database connection of course because all of them are going to have to connect to that so let's just put that inside of there and they're also going to need a cursor that's going to be used to traverse the records of the results and if none of this makes any sense that's because you haven't seen my database part of this tutorial series and I'll put a link in the description to that if you want to go to take a look at that but as I go through this this whole entire video I'm going to re-explain all that stuff so don't worry about it all right now what else am I going to need I'm also going to need to keep track of the current student that is being selected and I'm going to need to do that because like for example if they click that they want to load a student and we're, we're probably going to need to know how to update that student all right so we're also going to need that and I'm just going to give that a value of zero as well all right so as of now that those are the only things that jump to mind I'm going to need a database connection for all these guys I'm going to be able to, tr to traverse that information for all these guys and I'm going to need to keep track of what student I'm working with all right so as of now these are the things that I know I need. So what I like to do is to get the actual design out of the way. So what I'm going to do now is recreate this guy right here inside of my application. So like I said, you can draw a quick sketch and maybe even pause the video and try to create it yourself. Otherwise, you can watch me create it right now. All right, so I'm going to do this in the initialization phase. And the very first thing that I want to do here is I want to put a title on this. Yeah, so let's go students database. Okay, so we have that created. What else do I want to do? Well, I want to try to estimate how big the box should look. I really have no idea. So let's just go geometry and let's do something like um, 300 by 350. Let's see what that looks like whenever we create it. And of course, this needs to be put inside of quotes. Okay, so then I got my first row. So I have a label that says first name and then I'm going to have an entry box inside of it. So let's go and let's actually put first row inside of here. So first, just so we can divide everything up and it's a little bit easier to see. So I have my first name and label is gonna be equal to label. To do so, we pass in root and then the text that we want there. So our little d diagram we have says that the label is going to be called first name and pretty simple. I'm then going to go in and cre go and get my label and put it in a grid system. So it's going to start off on row zero. It's going to start off in column zero. I'm going to throw some padding on it just because, you know, that looks a little bit nicer. So let's just do padding all around with it. And then I want it to be pushed over to the left side of the screen. And how we can do that is sticky W. All right, so that's west or, you know, left side of the screen. Then what I need to do is hold the different changing values for first name. And so what I'm going to do, is, this is going to be for the entry box. I'm going to create another guy. This is going to be first name and entry and value. Because what I want to do here is create a string variable that I can tie to the entry that is my entry widget that I'm going to be creating here and this is going to be root and it's going to start off with a value of nothing so that's pretty simple then I need to tie this to my entry widget that I'm going to create here so I can have n and this isn't going to be entry value this is just going to be the entry widget and to create that I'm going to go ttk entry and I'm doing it this way so that if I wanted to come in and style it more later on I could do it that way and what I'm talking about is the TTK part here I'm not going to do it in this part of the tutorial just doing it because it doesn't hurt anything then I need to tie it to the string variable that I just created and to do that I go variables text variable is going to be equal to and self and fn entry value all right so those are all going to be tied together then I'll be able to reference this guy this guy right here to change the value in the entry box that we create for ourselves and then after that I just need to use the grid system 
to put in my little entry here. So this is my, my entry widget. So I'm going to go grid and row is equal to zero and column is going to be equal to one. So this is row, obviously rows going left to right. Column is then going to be horizontal. So we're going to have the label be first and then the entry itself be second. All right, pretty self-explanatory. Let's go and get this as well. And let's also grab sticky. So there that is and there that is. All right, so there we went. We created our first row. And what I mean by that is we created our first name being the label and this guy being the entry box. So now let's create our second row. Why don't we just copy this and save ourselves some time. So let's do that. Paste that in there. And this is going to be the second row. Second row. And here we'll just change this to last name label. And this is going to be last obviously. And last name label. All this stuff. Obviously the row, this time we're gonna be on the second row, which is one. Column zero is perfectly fine. Change this to L, change this to L. Da, 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 da. We can leave that be the same. We can leave this be the same. This is gonna be last name entry value and last name entry. And then just make sure that this is on the first row and this is on the next column after that. Now let's run it, see what happens. Oh, well, we get some sort of silly error. So da 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 da. LAN label is not defined, and that's line 42. So 42 up, oh, say, got rid of that. Got rid of that guy, no problem. And as I'm going here, I'm just going to occasionally run it to just see if I made any type of little silly mistakes randomly. And we could run it again, and here we can see. That is what we got so far. So looking pretty good, all right? So now let's go and create our two little buttons that we have. So there, we're going to then come in once again. This is going to be our third row. And then we just need to put two buttons inside of there. So I'm gonna go self, and I'm gonna call this submit button, cause that's what it is. And TTK, create our button instance widget. And it's gonna be tied to root, just like before. The text on this guy is going to be submit, obviously, because that's what our little diagram we got from our people told us to do. And then I'm gonna go command, and I need to tie this to a function that I'm going to call whenever it's clicked on. And that is student submit, right there. So stud submit. So we'll just type in stud submit. And at any time they click on the submit button, it's gonna call for that function to execute. Next thing I need to do is just go and put it in the grid. So submit and button and grid. And I'm gonna basically do the same sort of thing here. This is gonna be row two, third row, but you know, starts at zero. I'm gonna do a column is gonna be zero, obviously. And you know what? Let's just go and use exactly the same stuff here. So the padding, and sticky, and let's throw that in there. All right, so that's pretty cool. Then we're gonna have update right next to it. So we'll go and throw that inside of here and just change this to update and change this to update. And the text is gonna be update. And we are going to change this. This is gonna be row two, but this is going to be column one. And I think that's everything. Let's run it, see what happens. And there we are. And I'd like the update to be merged over here to the right. So I'm gonna go over to the sticky part. I'm gonna get rid of it. So let's do that and run it. And there we go. And we'll see how this lays out whenever we do our little list box inside of there. But that's looking pretty okay. All right, so now we need to go and get our little list box and throw it inside of there. So this is going to be our fourth row. And I'm going to throw a scroll bar here, but I'm not certain that I'm going to use it or not. And then let's create our list box and throw it inside of there. So I'm going to go self and list box is equal to and list box. And that's going in root, of course. And once again, we're going to go self and list box. And here I'd like to bind it so that when one of the, whenever the list box is clicked on, that it's going to load the student in the two entries whenever it's clicked on. So once again, if they come in here and they click on Derek Banis, then it's going to load these two entries with that information. To do that, to bind to a list box click, I just go list box, 
select and then close that off and then I tell it what function to call whenever the list box items are clicked and what did I call it I called it load student so there that is and I can get rid of those two guys is this is going to be student submit this guy up here well let's leave that in there but this is going to be student update update all right so now we have that set up I'd also like to start off if there is nothing in the list box that there's going to be like a little bit of information in regards to what will go there. So I'm going to insert a little message in there. I'm going to start at index one and it's just going to go students here just so there's a little message there whenever they first create their application or whenever the application first loads. And then I need to just place all of this into the grid system. So we'll go list box and I will say grid and this is going to be row three now. Column is going to be equal to zero because the leftmost. I want this to span over all of the available space. So there are going to be three boxes that I want to fill in here. So I'm going to go column span is equal to four and then we're just going to do our pad x thing here again so pad x and i want it to fill all of the available space let's go down to the next line there's that and i want it to start at the westmost and cover the eastmost so i want it to cover all of the available space that's what the w and e mean there and then also to finish off initializing because remember i'm initializing my interface here to initialize this, I want to then call for my database to be created. And I'm going to create that in my setup DB function that I have up above. Already defined that. And then, of course, if there is any information to put inside of this list box, I want to take it and put it in the list box whenever everything first loads. So we'll go list box, and there we are. So as far as I know, that is all we need to do in regards to initializing our application on startup. And so because the initialization function is going to be the very first function that is run, and at the end of it, setup DB is going to be the first function that is run, I'm now going to create setup DB. All right, so what do we need to do to set up our database? Let's just walk through the steps once again. So I need to open or create my database. That's the very first thing that I want to do. Then what I want to do is I want to go and create the cursor so I will be able to traverse the records of my database. So let's go create cursor. And the next thing we're going to need to do is to create the table that I'm going to store all this information in if it doesn't exist. So that's something I'm going to need to check for. And is there anything else I need to do? I don't think so. So I want to keep my functions nice and neat and small as possible. So first thing I need to do is open or create my database. So I just go self and then I'm going to go db connect to my database. And I'm going to use an SQLite database connect. And I am going to call it student db because it's a student database. So that makes sense. All right, so we're moving right along here, getting a lot of stuff done. So let's go now and create the cursor. I already gave it the name up here, so there that is. And to create that, we just go self db connect, and then you go, oh, hey, I want the cursor. So that's what that does. Create my table if it doesn't exist. Now here I need to understand a little bit of SQL. So I'm gonna walk you through exactly what goes on here, what, what I'm doing, but like I said, you may you know, if you need more information than what I'm going to explain to you, then you're going to have to go back in this learned program series and take a look at, you know, the SQL, uh, SQLite part of it. So to create a table, pretty simple. You just go create table. Now remember it says if it doesn't already exist. Well, how do I check if it, if it already exists or not? It's actually pretty simple. You say if not exist. All right, so that's pretty simple. And then we're going to call it what? Our table is going to be called students. Now, what am I going to need for each student to differentiate them from each other? Well, I need an ID. So I'm going to go and create a student ID here. And how you do that, it's going to be an integer. And I want it to be a primary key. That means that it's going to be used also to differentiate each student from each other. Primary key is sort of another way of saying that. I want it to automatically, each time a new student is entered in the database, 
to automatically increment the ID. So I don't have to worry about doing that. Guess how you do that? You go auto increment, pretty simple. And I want every single student to definitely have an ID. How you do that is you say not null. So that's what all that stuff means. As we know, I'm going to be storing a first name inside of here. It is going to be text, and I definitely want that to be a requirement, and that's what not null means again. Then I want a last name inside of it, and it's going to be text, and it's also going to be not null. All right, so there we are. We got everything that we want to put inside of there. And here, how you create an SQL command you want to run is you put semicolon inside of there, right along with this double quote outside of here, and then that guy right there. All right, so that is going to create our database table for us, and it's just yelling at me, telling me that it's too long. I don't care, that's how long it's going to take, all right? Another thing we want to do here is this might cause an error whenever we call for this guy to execute. We could actually, we come in here and put a try block around all of this, but I'm going to put a try block around this part only. So I'm going to say try, and then what that means is I need to indent all of this. So there we are. So try is just going to protect us from getting an error, and we're going to try to handle that error if it happens. Then after you create a command that you want to execute, you have to go and call your database connection, and you need to tell it to commit that execution that we want right there. And that's what that's going to do for us. Then I want to catch any potential errors. So we do that with accept, and more than likely, if we have an exception here, SQLite wise, it's going to be an operational error. So we're going to go operational error. There that is right there, operational error. And here what we're going to do is we're just going to print out a message that's going to say there is an error. And we can debug that later if there's something that could happen. So we'll say something like table not created. All right, do I need to do anything else? I don't think so. So there we are. Now we know how to set up our database. So what do we want to do next? Well, we want to come in here and we want to figure out what happens whenever a student is submitted. Well, basically, all I'm going to need to do here is insert the student into the database. And what else do I want to do? Well, whenever the student is submitted into the database, this is just me talking out of my head right now, I'm thinking to myself, I probably want to clear the entry boxes where the first and last name are. So let's go and let's also do that. Clear entry boxes. And anything else that we need to do? Well, of course, if we just submitted a new student, we want that student's name to go into our, our list box. So we'll say update list box. All right, so now we got to go in here and let's create this guy. So what we need to do here is execute another command inside of our database. So we're going to have to go and get our database connection and we're going to need to execute a command. And anytime you want to insert some information in the database, you call insert into and the students table, this table we just created up here. And what are we going to insert? Well, remember the ID is going to auto increment. So we don't need to worry about doing anything except submitting the first name and the last name inside of there and close that off. And I want to separate these into a couple different lines so it's easier to look at. Then what you do is you say values and let's go and put a space here because we need to put a space between that and values. And then what you do is you put another bracket inside of there and you need to put the first name and so forth and the last name you have to surround them with quotes so I'm going to put a single quote here so it doesn't get confused with the double quotes that we have there already and then I'm going to go down to the next line and actually get the information from the entry box remember we are submitting a student and we're getting it from the entry box and I want specifically the FN entry value and how I get it is by calling the get function and we're going to go plus and then I'm going to put a single quote there to close off this single quote right there. I put an extra one in there, so be careful that you don't you know, leave that there. Or actually, I'm going to put my double quotes, and then we'll have a single quote right there. Then I'm going to put a comma and a space, and then I'm going to have another single quote and another double quote. If you 
get any type of error with this just jump to my website again it's in the description copy and paste the code then you'll see the difference between the single quotes and the double quotes it's kind of hard to see here on the screen then we're going to do exactly the same thing with the last name so let's just go and copy this and let's paste that inside of there and this is just going to be last name entry value and there's get and then we're going to once again have plus there and this is going to close off this that that there and after this we're going to have a closing bracket for our value and we are then going to close off the whole entire thing so hopefully I did all that right so next thing I need to do is to clear my entry boxes and to do that you just go self and you reference the entry box that you have here so you go that and delete zero and end and that calls for the first name entry box to the you know the name in there to be deleted and this is going to call for the last name to be deleted and I also have update my list box that's something else I want to do so let's come in here and let's update our list box to do that we just go self update list box and I'm gonna call for that and, and figure out what I want to do there so as you can see again this function basically has four statements inside of it this guy right here had what not that many set up the database I mean we set up the database in one two three four pretty much four main lines with the try block to catch any errors so now we are calling for update list box so I should probably come in here and create the update list box function alright so now it's time for us to think about what happens whenever we update our list box well we're going to go and get the entire list of students from our database and put them in the list box but chances are there's already going to be some things inside of the list box so what I want to do is I want to delete the items in the list box so let's do that first next thing I want to do is get the students from the database and we're then after we get all of those students out of there we want to put the students in the list box so put students in list box and do we need to do anything else not really we need to use try catch blocks to uh, go in there and catch any exceptions but that's it so how do we delete items in our list box well we just call for self and then list box dot delete zero and end now we need to get our students from our database and to do that we are going to well, remember we're going to use a try block here and then we're going to get the result by calling our database so we'll go self we're going to use our cursor here and we're going to say execute and to get information or select information from the database you go select and what do I want I want the ID I want the first name I want the last name and then how I'm gonna go from students obviously that is the table that I'm gonna be pulling information from so that's gonna get me all of the students with their ID first name last name and after I get those results what I want to do is throw them into my list box so I'm going to say for row in result and row is just going to be each individual student pulled from the database and then to go and get all that information out if I want the student ID well the student ID is the very first thing we're pulling out of here so that is going to be in the zero index of our row and then if I want to get the student's first name that is going to be in the next index of our results and the last name is going to be row uh, two there we are so now we got all that information and now I need to put that information into my list box how I do that is go self and list box and we call insert that's how we put that information in and student ID and that is going to represent not only the ID for the, each of the individual students but it's also going to represent the index for the student information just another way for me to store it and also keep track of everything so that'll work out real nice and then I need to put the student name first name and last name just like you see right here so it's gonna go first name and last name and as you can see the ID doesn't show it's the index for each of the list box items alright so we're gonna go student and first name and then of course there's a space between those two guys so let's do this 
and then we'll go student and last name inside of there and that's it so that's going to go and put that information inside of there and that's this guy put students in list box so we can go and copy this out of here and paste it right there so that we know it's thoroughly commented and somebody can read this and understand it so there's the try block so now I need to come in here and go and catch an error so rather than type that out let's go and just copy this because we are lazy or at least I am and make sure it lines up with the try block whoops see there's the try block this is where the exception goes so throw that inside of there and here what I'm going to do very often whenever I'm doing I'm um, tracking errors I like to put one inside of here especially if I'm going to do the same thing over and over again I'm actually going to do it to the bottom part though so let's just here go here and we'll say the table doesn't exist and then let's catch default exceptions as well so we'll go accept and here we'll go and print out another message so I'm going to say one because this is an error that definitely could be triggered couldn't retrieve data from database all right so there's that and do I need to do anything else not as far as I know all right so now what we need to do is load our student information and what this is going to do is load list box you know items that are selected into our entries so what are we going to need to do once that is called well we are going to have to get the index selected and that's also going to be which is the student ID and what else are we gonna have to do well and just so you know load student if we scroll down here that's gonna be what's called whenever a scroll or whenever a list box item is clicked on So that's what this guy's doing so it's gonna get the index that was selected which is gonna be the student ID and it is also going to need to come in here and call for the event because I'm going to need to get that index from that event. Then the very next thing that we are going to do is we want to keep track of all of the current students that are selected. So we want to change that guy up there. So what are we going to do? Put a note inside of here just so we can remember that. Let's say something like store the current student index. And then what are we going to do? We're going to retrieve the student list from our database. And specifically, we want the student that has the same ID that was clicked inside of our list box. So we'll say retrieve student list from DB. And then after that, we want to set the names in the entries. All right, so get index that was selected with um, to get the student ID. So well, how do we get that? Well, I'm going to create a list box widget and to get the widget that was clicked on that you know called for this event to trigger we go event widget and then if I want to get the index specifically that was clicked on well, we're going to convert it into a string we go lb widget and then we go cursor selection and we want the item the very first item that was selected there so we'll go zero and we're going to go plus one to that because the list box is going to be zero indexed while the student database is going to be you know, one indexed it's going to start off at one while this is going to start off at zero so that's the reason why we changed that all right so hopefully that makes sense well then we want to store the current student index so let's come in here like this and go self and current student is going to be equal to the index that we just got right there. We want to retrieve the student list that has the same index there. So it's always going to be one item and we're going to be accessing the database. So that means we want to use try. Once again, we will go result self and the cursor and execute. And then we are going to do trying to select something out of the database. We go select and we want ID. We want the first name, we want the last name, and that's all we want from there. Uh, from students, and here we're gonna use where the ID is going to be equal to, and then we'll put the index that was selected in our list box. And what else do we need? To well, we are going to receive the list um, that hold the results, so we're gonna use the four again inside of here so we'll go four row in 
result and that should always be only one result because we are auto incrementing the ID and we want to here get the student ID and that's going to be the very first thing that's passed once again because that's the first second and third we're going to do the same thing again for student first name equal to row and there's that and student last name and that's going to be row two all right, so we got all of that, and then we need to set the names and our entries. So pretty simple stuff. Well, let's go over here, tab that in there. And how we set those is by setting the value that is associated with it. So we'll go first name entry value, and we call set, and then we put student first name inside of there. And we're going to do the same thing for the last name. So there's this, and this is going to be the last name, and this is going to be last name grabbing that from that and then what are we going to do well we're going to catch any potential exceptions that are thrown why don't we just copy this whole entire thing right here make sure it lines up with the tribe block that we have right there down to the next line paste that in there and it does line up and what errors could we have with this well let's just leave table doesn't exist that could be the error let's change this to two so that we know if this is triggered that that's the reason why that was triggered and that's all we need to do the only thing we need to do now is update student. And that's going to be called any time that the user changes something in the entry box and clicks the update button. So what are we going to need to update our records? Well, we are going to have to call for the update based on whatever the current student is. So remember up here where we were setting the current student right here? Well, this guy down here is going to update based on whatever the current student is. Okay, so that's going to be a call to our database. And what else are we going to do? Well, we're going to clear our entry boxes and then update our list box. So clear entries. And then finally, we are going to update list box with the new student list that is going to have the changes that were updated whenever the guy was clicked on access in the database we are going to throw this in a try block we are then going to call for a command to execute so connect to our database and we're going to say execute and anytime we want to update something in the database we call update and we're going to call students and we specifically are going to set to whatever the first name is inside of our entry so we're going to put an equal sign here and a single quote and then a double quote. So that's what that guy does. Let's jump down to the next line. To get the entry value, we're gonna do self, first name, and entry, and value. And to get the first name entry value, we call get, and then let's go down to the next line. We are then going to close that single quote off, this single quote up here. We're gonna close that off, so let's get rid of this little guy right there. Da da da. If you're getting an error on this, copy and paste it from the code in the description. Chances are you got your quotes wrong. Okay, so no big deal. People do it all the time. Then we're going to go last name is equal to, and what are we going to have? A single quote, and then we're going to have a double quote. Again, I don't like that PyCharm does that, but it doesn't. All right, so then we want to put a plus sign once again, and we're going to go self. Silly PyCharm went through a double quote there. Let's get rid of that. And then we jump down here. And then once again, we're going to go self dot last name entry value and then get to get that guy plus jump down to the next line whoops let's jump up here double quote single quote there we are that's going to make that better jump down here i knew i had an error there in my quoting because it jumped down weird okay it's just something to look for then we're going to have another double quote and we're going to have a single quote and then we're going to put space and then we're going to say where the id is equal to and we know that it's going to be equal to whatever the current student is so current student okay so if i quoted all that right which since it lines up everything should be okay but if i have an error in this code i bet you it's going to be in here and it's going to be because of these doggone quotes all right so let's come in here and let's continue so then we're going to call for this to commit so db connect and commit and then we want to catch any potential errors that we have. So let's go and grab this guy right here, copy it, make sure that we are here 
underneath the tri block and make sure it lines up. So go back like that, and there that is. And here we'll say database couldn't be updated. And after that, well, we want to clear our entry boxes. So we're going to say self and first name entry, and we'll call delete on that. Pass a zero inside of there and an end inside of there. And we're going to do exactly the same thing for the last name. So let's go in here and get rid of that. That's all beautiful. And then what do we want to do? We want to update our list box with our new changed student list item. To do so, we go self and update list box. And if I did everything right, this should execute without errors. And let's run it and see if I was perfect. And whenever I ran it, I'm getting a little bit of an error here. And let's see if we can figure out why that is. So let's just go into first name. Let's throw some names inside of here. So Dirk and Banis and submit. Okay, that worked. Now let's check to see that I'm able to actually pull this information back up here to update it. Aha. There we go. Couldn't retrieve data from the database. Let's go in here and just do another one just to see if I can trigger any more errors. Submit. Sally Smith went in there and it overrode it. Let's go and do another one. Mark and Thomas and submit. Okay, so it's overwriting that information. Let's see if I figure out what I did wrong here. And as I reviewed the code, I see here that I have an equal sign where this should be an underscore. And let's see if that one silly error there caused everything. So let's run it. Ah, still getting a little bit of an error here. Let's see what's going on. Run it and see how this works. So we'll go Dirk and Benis and submit. There that is. And it loads in the screen. And let's change this to uh, Dirk, I don't know, Smith and update. Ah, that's not going good yet. So let's go and see if we can find any other little silly errors we have here. And I also noticed something else. Each time we go through here and get our results, we want to put this in the list box, but I went and put it outside of that for loop, and then I did it also down here. So another silly little error to catch. Throw that in there, throw that in there, and now let's execute it and see if it works this time. Aha, no errors. And here it is, and let's take a look, and we will throw this in here, and throw it in here, submit, and there I am again. Let's change my name to Smith and see if it updates. Gave me another error. Let's look and see what's going on. Da, 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 da. Line 144. And this debugging process is just as important as anything else I'm doing here. So let's go and take a look at what could possibly be causing problems here. And this says student database object has no attribute student update or stud update. So let's go and see if I went and put the wrong name here inside the function. Absolutely, this is supposed to be update student, not stud update, and so let's come down here. And there's student submit, that's good. And here we have stud update. See, that was wrong, no problem. Paste that inside of there and run it again. And I'm getting the feeling it's gonna work this time, so let's go to and, and submit. And then let's click on that and change this to Smith and update. A, it worked. And then let's throw Sally Smith inside of here and submit. Works. Sally Smith pops up when I click on that. Derek Smith pops up when I click on that. And what else could we do? Let's go and change this to Mark and submit. And Mark Smith pops up there. And let's change this to Banis update. And there we go, guys. Looks like I fixed everything. And there it is, a working TK Enter database application all in one video. Hope you guys learned a lot and enjoyed that video. And like always, please leave your questions and comments below. Otherwise, till next time.